So in this video, I wanna dive into five reasons why you might not be building muscle and what you can do about it. And in fact, these are the five things I keep seeing guys mess up in the gym and these are the same guys that keep looking exactly the same year to year without making any significant improvements to their physique. Despite losing some body fat or gaining some body fat, their body looks pretty much the same. And that's exactly what happens if you're too focused on fat loss or just weight loss in general without actually looking for ways to build more muscle and to understand how actually to improve your physique. And I've been stuck in this myself and I didn't realize that fat loss is there to simply reveal the gains you've made and the actual gains are made by focusing on building muscle. And also I wanna point out that this is not some kind of magical solution, it's not some kind of random BS that I can just tell you right now, hey, you know, take this little supplement or take this food or these five magical muscle building foods. There's no such thing like that. Building muscle as a natural lifter takes patience, takes a lot of hard work, takes persistence, and that's something you need to expect and be here for the long haul, and that's how you're gonna see massive improvements. So the first reason why most guys aren't building muscle, which could also be holding you back, is not having a structured progressive overload system. And an example of this would be, let's say you wanna get tanned, and you go outside, you spend five minutes in the sun, and you do that the next day, keep doing that the next day, and you keep doing that for weeks and weeks and weeks. You're only gonna get so much out of those five minutes. And if you don't increase that time, regardless even of the frequency that you do it every day, it's not gonna make any difference. You simply need to overload. You simply need to increase the demand for your body to get that tan. And the same thing happens with training. If you keep doing the exact same weights or what most guys do actually is picking weights completely randomly, how they feel that day, or simply whichever plates are available, which is something that I keep seeing in the gyms every single day, they don't see any progress because their body doesn't have a reason to grow. The body needs a really, really strong reason to grow and there needs to be that stimulant that's demanding of the body to grow. And if you go to the gym and if you're only doing 45s or 25s or whatever is available without actually looking into small old plates, which as funny as that sounds, that's actually exactly what a lot of guys are doing and because I know I've done the same. I mean, this is not something I'm telling you that from uh, this high position that I've never made this mistake. I've made this exact same mistake. I didn't look into, first off, what I was doing before, how am I overloading, what's my game plan here to actually get stronger at these certain lifts and not just increase the weight itself, but also look into how to do the reps, how to do more reps, how to do it with better quality, how to generally start seeing some progression. There has to be some element of progression, otherwise you're simply going to the gym and you're repeating the same and you're gonna get the exact same results. Now the second reason most guys aren't building muscle and looking exactly the same year to year is because they don't have any system for gathering data and then using that data to optimize their training. And this again comes down to basically making decisions on how you feel. Imagine you wanna develop the new iPhone and you're not actually looking at what users are saying you can improve. You're not looking at the latest technologies. You're not looking at any bugs or any features that people are complaining about or that people wanna see or something that could get better. How would you know how to make the next one better? And the same thing happens with training. You wouldn't wanna make a decision just randomly like I see a lot of guys do and that's exactly what's holding them back. If you go there again, pick some arbitrary wait to do without looking at what you did previously or what you need to do next time, you don't really know what you're doing. You're basically guessing. And this is exactly what happens with intermediate lifters and why so many get stuck in that intermediate phase because as a beginner, this kind of works. You can get away with it for the first, let's say five or six months of training. You can do pretty much anything. You will see some progress. But as an intermediate lifter, the lifting game, quote unquote, becomes more like a chess game if you wanna build muscle. You really have to understand what are multiple steps ahead to plan for it, to really have a strategy to know when to take a step back or two or even three steps back so you can take five or six steps forward. So being able to gather that data is really critical and I see actually a lot of guys gathering the data but not using the data, which is another big, big problem. So you have a log, you just go there and you write things down in an app but you're not using the data at all. And I see this a lot. So this is something you do have to look into if you're an intermediate lifter and if you wanna get serious about making progress, if you are sick and tired of being stuck, this is exactly what you need to start looking into is how does that data look? What is it telling you to do? Can you see any similarities? Can you see any parameters that you can modify to actually set yourself up for future success in terms of doing either more weight, more reps, or seeing some form of progression, or simply changing certain exercises when they're no longer viable, when you're no longer progressing in a certain way that you wanna see that progression. So really start paying more attention to this, and you're gonna start seeing immediate improvements in your training. 
Now the third reason most guys are stuck not building muscle is because they're continuously dieting. They're stuck in what I call perma cutting. And I've done this myself. I didn't want to actually commit to a muscle building phase because I was paranoid about gaining any body fat. I didn't have the right systems. I didn't know what I was doing. So I wanted to actually do it in a way that I would maintain my leanness because I got leaner. That was my first goal. I got down to about 10 to 12% body fat. And then I didn't want to commit to building muscle because I didn't know how to do it the proper way. And I didn't want to get that bulky physique with lots of body fat. And so basically I didn't commit to anything. I just kind of stayed there. I stayed in between. I didn't commit to gaining muscle. I didn't want to continue fat loss. So I wasn't making any progress. I was basically stuck in the exact same position. And a lot of guys do this. Then they're paranoid without gaining body fat or simply they, as soon as they gain a little bit of body fat, what happens, they immediately go back to cutting. They immediately go back into fat loss. So again, never giving your body a break, never giving your metabolism a chance to actually recover and to start using those calories more productively. This is a huge problem nowadays with this culture of being shredded all year round and never really letting yourself gain any muscle and fat at the same time. If you have to gain a little bit of fat in case of gaining a little bit more muscle, I think it's really worth it to do this in a more productive way. Now, of course, if you're someone who is at a high body fat percentage, your first priority should be to get leaner, to get healthy, that will massively improve your health and your physique and your appearance and everything. But then after that initial phase, you want to start looking into a lean gaining phase and a really controlled phase where you can put on more muscle, where you can get stronger, where you can really improve your physique and build that lean body mass, which is an asset that's going to really serve you in the long run. Because then in the long run, you won't have to do as much fat loss in order to really look clean and look much, much better in general. Because with more muscle, you look better even at a higher body fat percentage. Now the fourth reason most guys are stuck not building any muscle is because they're using a training program that's not adapted to their genetics and their lifestyle. And I see this a lot. I mean, guys are doing the same training program for months and months and months, not seeing any results and simply not realizing that that training program might not have enough volume or it might have too much volume, not enough intensity or too much intensity for their particular situation. Or the exercise selection might be for a completely different goal, like someone doing five by five strong lifts and their goal is to actually build more muscle and improve their physique. That five by five might work fine if you're just starting out, if you have no experience whatsoever, but if you're someone who's an intermediate lifter and you actually wanna optimize your training for building muscle for hypertrophy, doing something as simple as a five by five will not really yield the muscle gaining results compared to some other options out there. You might not have enough volume, you don't, might not have enough exercise selection variety to actually hit the body parts from different angles and to really optimize different repetition ranges. All these things that we know now that improve your chance of building more muscle. And if you're stuck in doing someone else's program who might have a different goal, well, no wonder you're not seeing results. So you really have to look at what will work for you as an individual and not be too stuck into what someone else is doing. Because if you're copying someone's routine, that person has different genetics. So that person might respond to a lower volume routine that might be training only two or maybe three times per week for about 30, 40 minutes, which is fine for them. But if you wanna maximize your results and if you need to do a little bit more, you have to be open for that. And I know I'm saying this, you have to be open to that because I know I made the same mistake. I was stuck in doing things that I really felt like would work because I saw the forums, I saw some success stories, I saw people doing it, and I just wanted to do that cookie cutter program. It was so simple. I just wanted to do something, but it didn't work for me until I figured out how to adapt the program to my needs, to what will work for me. That's when I started seeing massive results because my body responds differently compared to most people. I don't have the best genetics. So for me, I had to really adjust the training program, not just as a whole, but actually for each body part, when I realized that certain body parts of mine don't grow as much as other body parts. So I never had a big problem growing my back, but I had issues with growing my my chest. So I had to adapt the training program. The same thing is for shoulders and arms. My arms do tend to grow a little bit more compared to my shoulders. So I had to adjust the training program to match these circumstances in order for me to see the best results. Now the fifth reason most guys aren't building muscle and seeing the results they want to see is because they're not taking care of their lifestyle and their recovery. This is such an important component. Most guys focus so much on what they're doing in the gym and what they're eating and all their nutrition, their training, but they completely neglect things like sleep, like general recovery and how much their body can really tolerate. This is especially evident if you're going through different phases in your life, like if you have a phase where you have a really important project at work or 
you're starting a business on this side or let's say you have some family stuff that you need to take care of and there's a lot of stress in your life, well, your training has to adapt for that and your training has to be specifically built for that type of situation. Otherwise, your recovery can't keep up. And when your recovery can't keep up, you're not really building muscle. And this is a really big problem. I see either it's being overtrained or in some cases people are completely undertrained where their recovery can handle so much more but they're not doing it. But in most cases, it's actually not recovering enough. And this is what I see with guys like myself who are actually types of guys, you know, when you tell me how much would you rate this intensity, I'm gonna always say like, ah, I can do a couple more reps. I can always do more. I can always kind of push myself a little bit more and I'm leaning toward that and I have that bias to doing more and in my case, I need to know how to stop myself from overtraining. Now, some people might have the opposite problem where they're not training enough and not hard enough and they have the issue of how to get that work ethic and that motivation, but specifically in my case, I mean, I've seen everything with my clients, but specifically in my case, this is where I need to really be able to put myself on hold. Tell myself, look, take it a little bit easier. Otherwise, I'm gonna overtrain, I'm not gonna build muscle, and I'm actually gonna hurt myself. And that's a big problem. Your lifestyle and your recovery plays a key role. It's what enables you to have that potential for growth. Because when you have more recovery, you can then push your training hard, you can do more and recover from it and see the results. Otherwise, if your recovery is so poor that you can't really recover, you might only be able to do so much and enough to just maintain. And that's something I keep seeing a lot with guys and one of the big factors of recovery is sleep. If you're sleeping four or five hours a night, you're not really gonna see the most gains. We know this and not just in terms of the gym but actually even outside of the gym, you're not gonna be focused, you're not gonna be as productive, you're not gonna be as happy. So sleep would be one of the first things to look at if you're looking to optimize your lifestyle and your recovery. And there's really no way around this. I know there's myths out there, people saying Arnold slept six hours or some guy slept three hours or four hours and he's doing it really well and he's seeing great results. Look, the data is pretty clear. Let's look at the scientific literature. Let's look at the actual control studies. I mean, we know for a fact that seven or eight hours of sleep, that's really where you wanna be if you wanna see great results. And that's not something you can really work around. There's no magic solution, there's no supplement, there's nothing, you have to be patient, you have to get to bed on time, you have to organize yourself, and you have to prioritize this if you wanna see results in fitness and all the other areas of your life. So really, with recovery and your lifestyle, this is something I wanna urge you to start optimizing, start looking into, not just start paying attention more to training and nutrition, but really start looking at some of these other factors which are affecting you, like your stress levels and learning how to deal with that, introducing some meditation, introducing some things in your life that you enjoy, like certain hobbies that will relax you and and allow you to build more muscle and that's really gonna improve your life quality and not only your appearance and also what's gonna help you out is the video here that I'm gonna leave at the end check out that video you're gonna love it lots of great tips lots of useful strategies for you to check out other than that if you want to work with me as your coach and as your mentor I'm gonna leave a link in the description below where you can find more details for that and I will see you in that next video